Hey guys, James here. You're watching The Filmmaker's Project. That was a clip from my most recently released short film, The Deepest Part of the Ocean is Not Empty. If you haven't seen it yet, be sure to check it out before watching this video because we're going to be going behind the scenes. Now, this short film is based off of the popular creepypasta of the same name. It was requested by my subscribers that I adapt it, and I managed to get in contact with the original author to get their permission to do so. They were great and said to go right ahead and that they'd love to see the finished product. Well, here's how we made it, starting with the Tuscany itself, which is the deep sea submarine that our lead character, Booker, played by Sullivan Radcliffe, is in throughout the film. Are you ready to make history? Over. I wouldn't be in the Tuscany now if I weren't. The Tuscany itself is actually just a $15 trash can that I picked up from the Home Depot. I drilled holes in and ran wires through it until it began to resemble my reference pictures of deep sea submarines. Some parts of it are literally just held together by duct tape. All of the control panels were made out of old radio parts, which were mounted onto the set in various ways. I had these parts laying around in a crate for years, just in case I needed them for something just such as this project. The side screens of the Tuscany were a simple green screen setup, which I made displays to replace in post-production. Meanwhile, the main screen of the Tuscany was an old TV antenna that I slapped the display onto in post-production without any use of green screen. As for all of the footage seen on this display, it was a combination of real deep sea footage and visual trickery made in Adobe After Effects. The short was lit with a single light mounted onto the top of the Tuscany. Because the lighting in the short switches from blue to red, I did experiment with using blue and red lights on set, but opted to shoot with white light throughout in order to give me a greater control of the final look of the image in post-production. The roar of the giant eel that's heard at the end of the film was actually a recording of a real eel, which initially sounded like this. I then pitch shifted the sound, slowed it down, added some filters, and we wound up with this. Now by far the most ridiculous thing we did to achieve an effect on set was having the actor who portrayed Reuben, Patrick O'Connor, smack the side of the Tuscany whenever we needed an impact. Then you're hit, you look at the screen, you see it's a giant tentacle. So that just goes to show how important sound design is when you're making your film. It can go a huge way towards telling your story. And that's almost everything for this video, but if you want to see some on-set shenanigans, be sure to stick around until the very end. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. What was that? What? Oh, it came off the back. Oh, let yeah. Me just, let me just That's what I get for there. buying like a. F I literally bought the cheapest one I could find, and it shows. Let me get those floodlights on. Turns up the engine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's the wrong button. <laughs> Over. I'm only including this in like a. a real just you. I uh, Alright. Got it? Yep. Scene five, shot A, take B. Other way around. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Scene A. <laughs> no. I, see, hold on, I'm about to start over.